Oh, it's a sad today and the 2nd of September 2017. It's always a privilege to just come to us um, on Saturdays and lay down some of the things that I'm getting in the realms of the spirit. And we have been looking at, um, God has been talking to us about um, the body of Christ, what the body of Christ is, the church. And uh, some of the challenges that the church goes has been going through for years. What an honor that he would give us a platform like this to address those issues. And I really want to thank everyone that has sent us questions, people that have sent us encouragement. We we appreciate that. We take that. Uh, we do not take it for granted that you're listening, you're following, your life is being transformed. We want to say thank you for letting us know how much this is impacting your life. Your life, your lives, right? Few of you. So it's lives. When we started looking at, uh, um, especially the, the part of the body of Christ, of uh, discerning the body, the, the amount of response was so overwhelming especially when we transition into the aspect of spiritual abuse a few of you had to call a few texts and be like whoa i am so blessed by that teaching because that's something i've gone through that's something i'm going through a lot of people are like i went through that but i didn't even know it was spiritual abuse yes there is spiritual abuse so this week um this weekend we're taking spiritual abuse in the body of Christ to another level. This way, we want to see the role of the shepherds. We want to see the role of the pastors. We want to see the roles of the men of God, women of God in um, spiritual abuse in the body of Christ or in the church. Now, when we look at spiritual abuse, uh, as we have been looking at spiritual abuse, it sounded we gave the impression like it was just the, the fault of the Christians. No. No. Pastors, leaders, church leaders, please listen. This is very important. Not every Christian is your Christian. I don't care how much you want your church to be huge. Yes, there are people that are called with the grace to have millions in their congregation but still it would be the sheep that they can be uh, um, their shepherd they can lead those people there are people that when they will come into your congregation even though they're in the body of christ they will lose their place immediately why because they are not called to be there don't just be interested in having numbers let your focus be the kingdom. Let your focus be the body, building the body, making sure that the body is knitted together. Each, in every congregation where people are functioning in the body, they are taking their position and their places. The pastors, the leadership, do not and will not be able to have even that opportunity where people will be spiritually abused. I want to say that again. If you will allow your congregation, if you will pray and ask the Father to bring the right sheep, to bring the right people to your church, what will happen is that one, they will first of all give themselves to the Lord and then before they will give it to you. That will make your leadership relatively easy. It will be easier for you to pastor them. It will be easier for you to be a shepherd over Christians that are given to you by the Father. Now, if all you want is number, you will miss this. You will have numbers, but you will not be productive. You have numbers, but it will not be quality. I don't know about you. But I would prefer to have a church of 50,000 members that are very productive, that are growing in the grace that they need to grow in and be who they're supposed to be. Now, we want to take another step. If you are a leader, if you're a church leader, you're a pastor, and the people in your church, you see them as uh, um, the raw material to build your church, you're having it all wrong. The church is where the people are built. 
the people come in, they are built, they, they, they grow in the Lord, they get to a place where they voluntarily begin with you and the Father, begin to build the new people that come in. Now, what are we emphasizing? It's spiritual abuse for you to pick a baby Christian and give them an assignment they are not trained to do. Now, this training is not only in the physical, I mean spiritually. One of the things we do in our mentoring program is we will never put our, we will never put our signature, I will never put my signature on any premarital couple and say you're ready for marriage if they don't know how to uh, um, study the word for themselves, pray for themselves. What am I saying? Even at the level where you can be like, oh, they're getting married. What does the word uh, have to do with that? What does the Bible have to do with that? What does prayer have to do? No. If a woman would not be able to know how to pray for herself, if a man cannot pray for himself, study the word for himself, he's not ready to marry. That's what we do. If you ever come to us for uh, a mentoring program or premarital counseling and training, that's some of the roles that we have. We tell you from the beginning, are you ready to build your life first? Because one of the big challenges we have in churches, we have in marriages or in family is that people don't know how to be responsible for the little things that they ought to be responsible for. So at the end of the day, the pastors feel like they're doing a lot of work. The Christians feel like they are being pushed simply because there's no foundation. Pastors, leaders, before you assign any Christian in your church to do, I don't care if it's doing the uh, um, cleaning the top, janitor work, cleaning anywhere. Please make sure to go through the foundational class. Have a basic foundation class for your church, for your congregation, your ministry. The purpose God has given you. If you're dealing with people, have a basic training for them. Get to a point where you're sure they are born again first. Go to the next level to know that they've given their all to the Lord. When they've given themselves first to the Lord, when they give themselves to you in ministry as a leader, as a pastor... Your work is going to be so light. And then we can be able to avoid spiritual abuse. Otherwise, you're abusing them. Now, I know we've said a lot this week. And I want us to narrow, zoom as we end, as we close, uh, as we look at this teaching towards the end. I want us to see that it's, it's, a, it's a state, it's, it's, it's a spiritual abuse. For you as a spiritual leader, for you as a pastor, to take somebody you have not trained in the word, somebody you have not watched grow in Christ, and put them to function in your church. You're setting them up for failure and it's not okay. And the body of Christ will not be built like that. You will not be able to build a church by putting people to function where they are not trained, first in the world and in those departments. So if I'm starting a new law, what do I do? Train the first five or six people. Don't assign them into any position yet. Train them for the work of the ministry. Train them to be Christians. And then when they are grown, they are stable in their work with God, then you can assign them. That way you will not abuse them and you will not feel abused as a pastor. Now, we will be looking at how does spiritual abuse affect a pastor? That's something we'll be looking at next week. As a pastor, how do you know when you are spiritually abused? Because this is not one way. It's not just the Christians feeling abused. It's not just the pastor um, abusing the Christian. There are also situations where Christians abuse um, their spiritual leaders or their, their, their pastors. We'll look at that next week. Before I go, remember to pray for the service. Pray for your Sunday service. Pray for your pastor. Pray for your fellow Christians. This is a journey. And what a privilege it would be if the people you're walking with are as strong as you are. They're running with the same force you're running with. It's going to be easy. It's going to be a wonderful journey if we can do that. God bless you.
Enjoy your weekend in Jesus' name.